Hello, and thanks for joining in for the launch of OpenRose, an open source requirements management application, where the main purpose is to help users and teams to do it right and ultimately reduce waste. Open source is released on GitHub at github.com slash openrose. Users can go and look at the source code, the project, and the documentation for this application at the same location. Let me do a quick demo of the application. In this environment, I'm using Windows 11. It's a desktop computer. It's not a server uh, application where I have installed IIS and I've deployed a web deployment package over the IIS. When you connect to OpenRose, on the home page, you will have a welcome message like this, welcome to OpenRose. And then one would start by creating a new project. Now for this demo, I have created two separate projects. The first project here is a small example of how I have converted a document that was published by a bank called as Barclays. They came out with the new tariff plans for their customers or the information about the updated tariff details. So this particular project is nothing but a simple example where we are trying to show how Barclays as a company would have captured the necessary information from different teams and departments that would produce the ultimate guide about the updated tariff. So when I go into the project in the details view, you can see that here is the actual document, which is a public document produced by Barclays. Now, this document is already open here in my view. So this is the uh, public facing document. And here you can see the information about the updated tariff contract or content. We have about our tariff, account eligibility and fee, debit card charges, borrowing from us, and furthermore. When I go further down, you can see here more details about uh, the tariff itself. And you can also see information about account eligibility and fees, which contains all the different accounts that they offer with the eligibility information. Now consider that before producing this document, there was this internal initiative at Barclays where they needed all the different teams to come together and provide their input about the tariff. So when they initiated this project, they needed some place where they needed to capture the information and the requirements related to this particular document and information that they needed to put out for their customers. They needed to do several things. They needed their internal teams to provide the information. They needed people to review. They needed to have uh, negotiations within the team and finalize the document that they then wanted to put out uh, for their customers. This is where open rules could come quite handy. And in this example, I'm just going to show how Barclays would have used open rules to capture these requirements and this information. So here in the open rules, uh, I've just gone into the project Barclays uh, tariff for personal customers, and I've converted some of those key topics as item type. What I mean is, Inside the project, you have item type, and then within the item type, you have individual items which are nothing but requirements. So we, we can see here account eligibility and fees is nothing but one of the item type. And then when I go inside that item type, then I can see information about the account type, 
eligibility for premium banking, eligibility and fee for Barclays EVOS rewards. That's nothing but the topics that we see here, which is the account type, eligibility for premier banking, and eligibility and fee for Barclays AVOS rewards. So these are just examples that I'm trying to show here that you can capture the structure or the requirements in a nested hierarchical fashion within Open Rules. When I click on uh, account type, I can now see the actual table here, which is nothing but very similar table as what we see here. So individual teams and individual contributors would have helped capture this information. This is the detailed view in which uh, we are initially showing the details about uh, individual items as a read-only reviewable information but user can click on edit item and they can go here and work with uh, certain types of data. So you have name, status, priority, severity, description, which is a markdown formatted text description. Uh, and you have the preview for that description here. Uh, the same information can be visualized in a tree form. So instead of going into uh, the project as a detailed view, one can look at the tree view from within the project here, or you can go back to projects and instead of clicking on detail view, let's click on the tree view and we can see uh, the tree information here of the same data. Again, we have account eligibility, where we have account type, eligibility for premium banking, eligibility and fee uh, for Barclays EVOS rewards. So when I click on account type, we, we can see the exact same editable option to work with the description and few other properties here. Um, and we also can uh, go ahead and look at the other requirements that are being captured. Um, it's, it's a markdown format here, uh, so you can basically uh, capture certain formatted text details, including tables, and you can also uh, put links to external websites, also put links to certain images that will be visualized in the preview form here. Um, what I want to do now show is a quick um, ability to link uh, the data between existing created items or requirements. Uh, so here is my information about uh, what's covered by tariff and that particular requirement is linked down to eligibility for premier banking. So we can click on this to go to the child tree. So this is identified as a child of what's covered by eligibility tariff. So when I click on that, I'm just going to eligibility for premier banking here and we can see the details about that particular item or I can press back and I can see the information about the parent traces and I can just navigate back to that location. It's very easy to create new items, so you can just create a sibling. Sibling is nothing but something that cre gets created at the same level, or you can create a child item. When you create the child item, uh, it's just putting the default values for the name, status, priority, descriptions, and severity, and then you can update those details. Uh, this record is now already being created in the database, uh, and you can now update it. Uh, to make certain changes. So let's see if I change uh, the priority of this and save this, then I can see in the change history that the status has changed from new uh, to approved. And uh, same is the case for descriptions and uh, status, priority, severity, and name. So you can uh, make the changes which are logged in the change log. And if you are not going to work with that particular item, then you can go ahead and delete that item to remove it uh, from uh, the repository. Um, it's also very 
but simple to actually move items around. So you can use this different move options to move data, uh, including items or item types uh, anywhere within the repository. Um, and also it's possible to capture the baselines. Baselines are nothing but snapshot at a given point in time, and we will create a separate video about the baselining concepts. So open rows is using uh, .NET as its uh, core technology, and it's using Entity Framework Core uh, to connect to SQL Server database. And then it's deployed either as an EXE application, like a fully packaged application uh, that individual users can download and install on the computer, or you can deploy it into IIS, or you can also deploy it into cloud environment. The main purpose of producing and delivering open rows as an open source application is for the benefit of the users whereby uh, they decide where they want to store the data related to their requirements. In many organizations, these requirements are critical and very important to be stored within certain boundaries uh, and, and define certain access. Uh, so you want to keep it either locally on your computer uh, where nobody have access to it, or you want to keep it within the corporate network because this is your research work, this is your uh, future project deliveries uh, that you want to uh, maintain as a very important uh, data that you don't want to feed this information to uh, companies and software outside of your organization. We have several uh, reasons to protect our data and that's why the architecture of open roads is to allow you to keep your data within your hands uh, and, and, and have complete access to it, uh, which is defined uh, by how you store and keep your data. On top of this, uh, it's very important that uh, we also accept and allow uh, companies and users who wants to deploy this for uh, teams and collaborations uh, for working with external partners. Uh, in such cases, we also allow and we provide the web deployment package that can be deployed in the cloud environment. So that's a very brief overview of the application OpenRows. Uh, it's a simple to use, uh, very lightweight requirements management application, which is using Mudblazer, .NET Framework, Entity Framework, SQL Server as part of its product architecture. Um, and it's mainly driven as an open source initiative to allow maximum number of users to freely use this application for managing their requirements and be successful and also reduce waste. Uh, during the time when they work on a specific project or a specific initiative. We welcome your time and thanks a lot for joining us today and for watching this video. Uh, we also would appreciate if you can participate in helping either uh, using this application or spreading the word about this application uh, to you know your colleagues, to your friends, and to other people who would get benefit out of using this open source requirements management application. Thanks a lot uh, for your time today and have a great day.